in two different orbitals that would be called as excited state. In the ground state, the two electrons would be in the same orbital, the same molecular orbital. When two electrons are in the same molecular orbitals, they will have opposite spin, alpha and beta. And that is what is uh, uh, this one. So when they have uh, the opposite spin, the net spin is zero. So that's why it is called singlet. There's only one state that is the one with the uh, two up. One spin is alpha, another one is beta. If two electrons are in two different orbitals, they still can have alpha and beta, or both can have alpha, alpha spin, that will be alpha, alpha, or both can have beta and beta. When we say alpha and the alpha or beta, we think the electron is spinning around this axis. This is the long axis of the molecule. So if you have a molecule, we think of a molecule that is an axis. This is the z axis, x axis, and o axis. So the electron is going around this axis. When it is going around this axis, that is this one. And then when it is going around the same axis in the opposite side, it will be beta. So when they go around the same axis at the same speed, alpha and beta, they will cancel. They will become zero. That speed is zero. On the other hand, you can have the two electrons. One here, they go around the same axis. Another one goes around the same axis. Now, both the electrons have alpha and alpha. So that happens to have added to one. The other possibility is the two electrons are going around the axis and then goes around like this, and the other one is also going around the same axis. That is the z axis, and now the electron instead of going up, it goes down. So it goes like this, and the second electron is also going around the same axis. So that will be beta and the beta minus minus half, minus half. So what happens is minus half, minus half, it adds to minus one. So either it is plus one or minus one. So if the two electrons have the same spin, they can have plus half, plus one or minus one. The third possibility is instead of these two electrons, spinning around this axis, they can spin around this one, spins around the same axis, the other one in opposite direction, the same axis, but if you look at here, along this axis, they don't cancel. So whatever is going to be along the net spin along this axis is plus half, minus half, and zero, but along the other axis, that is the x axis, then it is there is a net sum there is a small spin left on that axis. So that one is the one that we call as triplet. So there are three states, alpha, alpha, beta, beta, alpha, and beta. This one and that one, they have alpha, beta spin, but they are not the same. They are different. That is very important to know. So this, it has a spin along a particular axis, whereas this one, See for example, if you think of this, it is rotating around this, this is rotating around this, they cancel. And then if you think along this axis, it is going to be rotating along this axis, and this axis they cancel. So along all three axes of this molecule, there will be zero spin. On the other hand, if in the, in the stupid state, there is one axis along which there is some spin left on this molecule, so the triplet will have three different states, not four, three. So if the two electrons are in two different orbitals, that can be four states, including the spin. We don't include the spin, then there will be only two states. There will be single and the triplet. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, this is the same thing reflected. I talked a little bit about this this morning. So this is the molecule. 
there are three possibilities. So this is a ground state in which there are two electrons in the carbon ion pi orbital, pi orbital, two electrons in the n orbital. All these electrons are in the same molecular orbital. If the two electrons are the same molecular orbital, this particular state, that is this state, has no spin. It is only a single state, zero spin. It has, this is alpha, that is beta. This is alpha, that is beta. They cancel each other. One plus half minus half plus half minus half. That that one is zero. Now, if you take an electron from here and put it here, now the electronic configuration for this is going to look like this: one here and one here. This will be a pi to pi star state. If we take one electron from here and put it here, there is one electron here and one electron here. So the two electrons are not in the same orbital. If the electrons are not in the same orbital, then they can have a net spin. For example, this electron can be alpha, this electron also can be alpha. Only if these two electrons are in the same orbital, they will have alpha and beta. This is the part now. I'm just telling you what are the possible things. What will happen with only about data? Similarly, this one can be alpha, alpha, or it can be alpha and alpha and beta. So every state, excepting the ground state, they will have two, st two states. The ground state is a singlet. Yes, one, that it is it can be a singlet or it can be a triplet. And pi to pi star state, either it can be a singlet or it can be a triplet. Okay, when you put an electron here, a dot like this, it doesn't show the spin. It does not. So that's why sometimes you will see it will have an arrow, up arrow or down arrow. When you put up, the up the arrow, down arrow, that means basically alpha and beta. They are opposite spin. If they have the same arrow, that means they have the same spin. It could be either alpha, alpha, or it could be beta, beta. It doesn't make a difference. So you can see now, in this case <coughs> 0, S1, and the T1, the electrons are in the same type of orbitals in both the states. There is one electron in the n orbital, there is one electron in the pi star orbital. T1 also one electron in the m and pi star. The electronic configurations is the same. The electronic configuration is different from spin configuration. Electronic configuration tells you where the electrons are. The spin configuration tells you how the spins are with respect to each electrons. So in this state, m and pi star, t1 also n and pi star. S2 is there are one electron in the pi and one electron in the pi star. Pi and pi star. So the electronic configurations for this single and the triplet are identical. They are not, they are not different. But the spins of these electrons in this one and that one are different. Okay. So a single triplet. Now, if you want to put the electrons, the energies of this molecule, this will be the ground state. And if you take an electron from here to here, you just look at the gap. This gap is corresponding to the n to pi star. If you take an electron from the n orbital and put a pi star orbital, that is, this electron is going from here to here. So the electron is required is this much. Whereas if you take pi to pi star, you take an electron from here and put it over here. So tell me which one is a zero, n to pi star, pi to pi star. Which one will be lower in energy, n to pi star or pi to pi star? N, we call them N pi star because there is one electron in the N orbital, one electron in the pi star. We call them phi to pi star, there is one electron in the pi, another one in the pi star. Of the two, which one for example here? If I take an electron from here and put it over here, take an electron from here and put it over here. So now the electronic configuration is going to be one is like this, another one is like that. Okay. Which one is 
of the two, which is lower membrane. That means the ground state, the first excited state, second excited state. The ground state has a, a direct, both electrons here, <coughs> this one and that one. The end pi star, n and pi star. Pi to pi star, pi and pi star. So which S1, which one, what is the electronic configuration for the first excited state? This is the question. Is it n to pi star or pi to pi star? Ground state, first floor, second floor. Okay. So which one is closer? We have ground state, ground floor, first floor, second floor. Which is the floor closer to the ground, uh, the ground state? First floor or the second floor? If you go on the elevator, you know. So you press button one, button two, button three. You start from zero. Button one is closer, or button two is closer to the ground state? Huh? First floor is possible. Now the question is, is the first floor is where the your class is or is it the second floor is the class? Okay. Now looking at this electronic configurations, you can tell which one will be closer to the, the ground state. That energy depends upon the gap. Okay. So tell me now, it is n to pi star and pi to pi star, which state is of Closer to the ground state. If it's on the eta, it depends upon the where the electrons are. The electrons are in the lower orbital, that means it is more stable. Higher orbital, it is less stable. Less stable means more energy. Okay. Okay. Now, two electrons are here, two electrons are here. If I add the number, you get something. Okay, that is the ground state. Now, we have taken away one electron from this orbital and put it in that orbital. If you want to add the energy of this molecule, you will add these two electrons plus this electron and that electron. Okay. On the other hand, now to go from here to here, you need that, this much of energy. And in a pi to pi star, there is only one electron here and another one is in pi star. To take an electron from here to here, it requires this much of energy. So it is actually less stable because you are taking a more stable electron to a less stable orbital. So a pi to pi star is of this one and this one is n to pi star. So you can always calculate the orbital energy and then you, you can find out S1, S2, S3 like that. This is something that you eventually need to know. But for aromatic molecules, there is only pi to pi star, there is no n to pi star. Because n means non-bonding orbitals. Only atoms like oxygen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, they all have non-bonding orbitals. Other ones, they don't have, okay? Now, so this is for the formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, as I already mentioned, it has got a lone pair. That is, there are two electrons here and two electrons here. If you go back to the old octet rule, when you learnt organic chemistry or any kind of chemistry about the bonding in molecules, two electrons are holding, uh, eventually every atom has got eight electrons surrounding it. That is the Lewis octet rule, right? So if you take, this one has got four electrons, this oxygen should have eight electrons, that means there are two more electrons here and two more electrons here. So that is the non-bonding orbitals, okay? If you take this carbon, it should have eight, eight electrons around that carbon. So there are two electrons here, two electrons here, and four electrons here, four plus four, eight. So there is this carbon has no other empty orbitals. So that's why any molecules containing atoms such as oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, they will have an orbital which is not bonded to anything. They will have a couple of electrons in those orbitals. Those electrons are called non-bonding, that means it is not bonding with anything, but still it is attached to that atom, okay? So if you take this molecule, ethylene, tell me whether ethylene will have a non-bonding orbital or no. 
No, this is something that you, pro you know. You now, when you study organic chemistry in the undergraduate, when you learn some textbook, you know, for first few chapters, you will learn this uh, octet rule. Do you know what is an octet rule? I don't know what you call it in Chinese. I am 100% sure you know what is octet. Octet rule, octet, you know, maybe octet. This one is, you know, okay. So if you have an atom, it will have eight, eight electrons around each atom. So if you have, for example, CH4, so CH4, for example, CH4, okay, there are two electrons here, two electrons here, two electrons here, two electrons here. If you add all of this, it will come to eight. That is common, okay? If you take, for example, water. If you take water, it's going to look like this. There are two electrons here, two electrons here. If you add these two and these two, there are only four electrons. For a molecule to be stable, oxygen should have eight electrons around the uh, oxygen. So to get to that thing, what we have is the two the extra four electrons are in two sets of non bond these are called as non-bonding orbitals. Okay. So these electrons are not bonded to anything. They are just hanging on the atom. They are called as non-bonding orbitals. Okay, so I don't know what I did. So if you go back to, for example, this compound, this molecule contains four electrons here, so there are two non-bonding orbitals, that is what is represented here. Tell me whether this compound, which is a double bond, carbon, carbon, double bond, does it have a non-bonding electron or no? It doesn't have non-bonding non electron. Okay, so every atom in this molecule, that is, excepting hydrogen, they should have eight electrons around that. If it is not, then that whatever left out, that is as, acting as a non-bonding electrons. So if you go to this carbon, there is two electron here, two electron here, and each bond is two electrons. So two plus two, four plus two, six plus two, eight. So this carbon has got eight electrons. This carbon has got eight electrons. So there is no non-bonding electrons, okay? So what happens is this molecule will have this car the, the pi orbital is one, and in between there is no orbitals. If you look at here, this for this molecule, there is a pi orbital, and but there is something in between. That in between is the non-bonding non-bonding electrons. So you have to know where the electrons are in a molecule to figure out how the molecule electrons get excited, after it is excited, where it is going, what is the new electronic configuration after it is excited. Okay? Any questions? Let me ask you, this after two, do you, do you study at some stage or not? After two, are you aware of this? Hmm? Okay, tell me, for example, how do you know carbon forms four bonds, CH4, nitrogen forms only three bonds, NH3, and then oxygen forms only two bonds, H2O. How do you how do you know that is the case? How do you, how do you figure, that, figure that out? You, you must have done this in the, uh, in the bachelor's class. Yes or no? You study? You forgot. Or 
Did you study and forget or you didn't study? Okay, now this is very important. Because if, how do you know, for example, if you are writing some structures, you should know exactly you are writing correct. Because you, can, you cannot write the oxygen. There's nothing called. See, you have CH4, and then there is no NH4, there is no OH4, right? These two are not correct. This is the right one, and NH3, and then water is OH2. So oxygen will form only two bonds, nitrogen will form three bonds, carbon will form four bonds, that depends upon Always the number of electrons should add around the atom to be eight. This is the famous uh, uh, Lewis, G. N. Lewis uh, uh, theory. You know, 1930s or 20s, he you know explained how the uh, molecules uh, are formed. So here, in this case, there is no non-bonding electrons. So in the, under those conditions, you have pi and pi star. So now. Here there are two types of states, n to pi star and pi to pi star. In this case, you take one electron from here, put it in this orbital, now you get pi and pi star. There are only one state, one. Uh, the electronic configuration is excited state, that is a pi to pi star state. So the ground state will be both the bonding orbitals, the bonding orbital will be filled. And the excited state, one electron will go from pi to pi star. So this is a pi to pi star, singlet state. That singlet will have a corresponding triplet. So what this talks about is only electronic configuration. But electrons not only worries about where it is, it also worries about how the other electron is doing. The other electron, if it is spinning, this will adjust its spin depending upon this second one. So it will be either alpha or beta. So singlet and the triplet. Now, the most another important question is first question is what is the configuration of the various excited state so where are they now if you worry about electronic configuration then you need to that since electrons are now separated now they have a spin and the spin is going to be a singlet or the triplet so you worry about singlet and the triplet now you need to know are the two energies are the same or different singlet state and the triplet state for example, here the two electrons have opposite spin. The triplet state, they have the same spin. So, sing, so the electronic configuration is the same. They are the same orbital. So tell me whether you think the energies will be the same or different. Same? The same. Same. All right. So let's see it's pretty also. Awesome. Is different, but in your PowerPoint, it shows the same. Okay. So, anybody else? Actually, why I said the same? Because the transition is by to by star. There is no another uh, transition, so it should be the same. Okay. All right. So, whatever you are saying, that is the same. So, you have some reason for this. So she says she, it, is, it is not the same, but in the, in the PowerPoint it is wrong because they are put in the same, same place. That's what she thinks. I just want one more opinion. What do you think? Is it same or different? It is a very interesting phenomenon. You know, it is a, something very, you know, you cannot uh, guess whether it is going to be a lawyer or higher in energy. If I tell you why it is higher or lawyer, then you can see the reason. Okay. Is it lower or higher or it's the same? I think the uh, singlet is higher than the triplet. Okay. You are correct. Okay. So, you know, if you notice here, in all of these places, singlet and the triplet, they are put at the same energy. It is put in the same energy only because we are not worried about the repulsions between the two electrons. So, when we think about a molecule, when you calculate the energy of a molecule, what we think is, you take an electron, it is attracted by the nuclei. 
So when it is attracted, the energy decreases. But when you have an electron and one more electron, this electron is attracted by this, this electron is attracted by that, but these two electrons are negatively charged. They repel each other. So attraction is going to decrease the energy, repulsion is going to increase the energy. So if you have an electron here, an electron here, negative charge, negative charge, they are not going to come close. They just, you know, if they come close, the energy will go up, okay? But the question is, there is no way of knowing where the electrons are. So we know there is an electron in the molecule, whether it is in that corner or in this corner, or here or there or somewhere next to you, I don't know. Nobody knows, okay? So as long as you don't know where the electrons are, you just ignore their repulsion and then calculate the energy assuming to be the same. But that is not true. The truth is the electrons are going to repel each other and they come close, repulsion will go up, they go away, the repulsion will go down. Because the electro they are always moving. All the elect electrons in a molecule is moving around. Sometimes the energy goes up, sometimes the energy comes down. But depending upon the spin of the electrons, they will either stay very close or they will stay far apart. Okay? If they have the same spin, they will stay away. If they have the opposite spin, they will stay close. Okay? So, what's going to tell now? I'm telling you, say if they uh, uh, this, this information tell me whether singlet or the triplet will have lower energy. Which one will be lower in energy? Singlet state or triplet state? Okay, this is, you know, you can guess these things. It is not that much, a uh, lot of these things are, because, you know, then you have to do by uh, ma uh, maths, whether this is right or wrong. But, you know, to, for every day, you cannot do all these tedious maths, but you can just guess if, what is going to happen. If the two electrons have the same spin, they will not come very close, because that is a part of the reasons why the two electrons are not in the same electron, the same orbital, they have op opposite spin, alpha and beta. If you take one electron here and one electron here, they are separated. Separated still doesn't mean one is in this room, another one is the next building. It is basically one is here, another one is over there. That's all, it is in the same area. Only thing is they are, they are not sitting right next to each other, okay? Now, if the two electrons have the same spin, they try to stay away from each other if the two electrons have the opposite spin, they, they will stay closer to each other. Tell me, now which one will be lower in energy? Singlet or the triplet? Okay. For every molecule, for the same electronic configurations, 
singlet will be higher, triplets will be lower. Okay. So here. So for example, here if I stop, this is a singlet and this is a triplet. If you look at the gap, there's a small gap. The triplet will be in the middle. If you take a five to star, singlet and the triplet, the gap is larger. So whether it is m to pi star or pi to pi star, the triplet is always is going to be lower than this. This is going to be larger than that. So the, as I mentioned already, in the triplet state, if the two electrons have the same spin, they stay far apart. If they stay far apart, there is less repulsion between those two. The repulsion is the one which is increasing the energy. So if there is less repulsion, the energy will go down. If in the similar state, if the two electrons have the same opposite spin, they can come close to each other. If they come very close, the energy will increase. Okay. So because there is nothing is stopping them from getting very close. Whereas in the in the triplet state, since the same spin, they know each other, they will stay away from each other. The energy, because of that, the less repulsion and the, the energy will come down. Okay. So always, but if you notice here, there is no fixed number for this gap. Some of them are small, some of them are large. Okay. That also depends upon where the electrons are. Okay. So, for example, what really control, this is a very important topic because you know, this is something we, in photo chemistry, we talk about singlet and the triplet all the time. You know, we have a feeling for what is singlet, what is triplet, what the energy gap is. What controls the gap? It's a little bit of equations. So, the energy of any state is going to be energy in the ground state n to pi star and then what is called as the k and j these are the attractive terms from the uh, uh, one electron to the, the nuclei and then this is the repulsion term okay so the singlet state if you notice this this particular you know, you don't have to know the details, how these things are comes apart, comes, but you should understand what is happening here. When we calculate the energy of the singlet state, we put the electron in the n orbital and the pi star orbital and add the electron energies and then we get this number. Okay, that number is not perfect. It is close to perfect, it is close to reality but not real. Because we have not taken into consideration the repulsion between this and that. So one approach is just take the repulsion between the two electrons and add for both the singlet and the triplet, you add this, the same number. So when you do the calculations, first time, you only take into attraction between here and here. Okay, that is the number you get as E0. And then now you worry about this electron and that electron, take the repulsion, independent of where it is. And that one is, uh, this this so this number you add up these two and the last term corresponds to the reality where you have the two electrons in two different areas and depending on that the repulsion is going to be less or more okay so when you take for example the singlet state the repulsion is going to be more than what you guess because what is going to happen is the when you take an, the So this is the, let's say here, two atoms, and then there is atomic orbitals, and there is a small region where there is an overlap, okay? So now, this area is the one which is holding the two atoms together. That is this one and that one. And this is a small area in which if the two electrons stay, the repulsion is going to be high. So what happens is in the singlet state, most of the time it is going to stay here. As, as since they have the opposite spin, they can spend more time here. And in that case, last term here is plus that goes up. 
And in the case of the triplet, what will happen is these two electrons, one will stay here, one will stay here. So they have the same spin. Now you can see the repulsion is going to be less compared to if the two electrons were here. So that's what happens here. These uh, do these two terms. You can see one goes plus, another one is minus. When it is minus, always energy comes down. So the, ele the energy difference between the singlet and the triplet will always be this 2j. That is 2j is the overlap integ integral, overlap between the two orbitals. If there are two orbitals which is making a bond, if the more overlap it is, then that is the gap is going to be larger. If the, over, if the two orbitals are one is like this, another one is like that, then the repulsion is going to be less. Okay, so that will what that is what will determine what will be the singlet, what will be the triplet energies of these molecules. Okay, now I will show you a little bit more. So the overlap, basically, for example, if you talk about pi and pi star, there is a pi orbital you know, between a carbon and a carbon. Pi orbital is here, pi star orbital is in the same area, but little bit above. So there is a larger overlap between pi and pi star. So the two electrons are one in pi, another one in pi star. There is a larger overlap. The more overlap, more repulsion. So when you have the triplet, the energy gap comes down much more compared to n and pi star. n orbital and pi star orbital are perpendicular to each other. When they are perpendicular, these two orbitals don't overlap. So if you put one electron here and put another electron here, they are in two, two different space. That is, one is in this kind of corridor, other one is the next corridor perpendicular to this. The two people, they, you know, they don't come across. Whereas if the two people are one on this, another one is the same, same side, there is a possibility you can just see the guy on the corridor. So that is what happens here. This one, when you have, for example, you can see, pi, pi star, and then n and pi star. They are perpendicular. These two orbitals, they don't overlap. So if the, electron, the electrons are in two different orbitals which don't overlap, the singlet triplet gap will be small. If the two electrons are in two different orbitals where there is a larger overlap, the singlet triplet gap will be large, okay? So, you can see, for example, so directly the, the single triplet energy gap depends upon the overlap between the two orbitals at the end of it. If there are, for example, n and pi star, n orbital is perpendicular. See, there is, when you say pi orbital, it is px and px. And then the py and pz are the ones which becomes lone pair. px and py are they are px, py, they are perpendicular orbitals. There is very little overlap between this and that. So now, if you take pi and pi star, they are the same space, this and this, there is a larger overlap. So if you have electronic states with a larger overlap between the two orbitals where the two electrons are, the gap between singlet and the triplet will be large. If they are in two different orbitals, where the, the, the uh, orbital overlap is small, a single triplet gap will be small, okay? Now, if you go back, you remember that formaldehyde, this compound? So the, this is going to have several states, right? So the ground state, in the ground state, there are two electrons in the n orbital, there are two electrons in the pi orbital. So these two electrons have opposite spin, these two electrons have opposite spin. So because of this, this one is going to have, uh, they are singlet, they are the ground state, there is no spin. Now, the first excited state, we are taking one electron from here and putting it in the pi star antibonding orbital corresponding to this. So there is one electron in the A n and one electron in the pi star. So the triplet state for this, is also has the same electronic configuration, but the two orbitals are perpendicular to each other. They are not overlapping. Whether they overlap or don't overlap, 
so triplet will always be lower in energy. How much lower in energy is going to depend upon the overlap? Tell me, in this case, the gap, the overlap is not that much because they are perpendicular. Assuming the molecule is not vibrating. Now, the gap will be small or large in this case. Between the singlet and the triplet, the gap between the uh, S1 and T1, whether they will be small or large. Okay. Answer is there on the board. Okay. Is it small or large? Okay, so it's, it's, it's written here. See, this is a small gap. You may ask, what is a small and large? You know, small may be less than 10. Large means is more than 30. That will be the approximate numbers. And in this case, the second excited state, we take an electron from pi to pi star. Pi pi star, the gap is between S1 and T1. It is large. You can see here, this, the triplet is lower energy than the singlet. Here, the triplet is lower energy than the singlet. How much low? It depends upon the two orbitals where the electrons are. Okay. So, what do you think? Is it uh, difficult, or you, you understood everything, or is okay? Just uh, if, if, do you have any questions on this? No, no questions. Okay. Tell me if you have no questions. If I take acetone. You know what is acetone? Structure of acetone and benzene. Which one will have larger energy gap? Acetone Okay. Acetone is this. CH3 CH3 and then benzene is this, okay? The, in this case, we are talking about pi to pi star. In this case, it is n to pi star. Asking is delta energy difference between S1 and T1, okay? Which one will be small, which one will be large? This top component is called acetone. This is called as benzene. Okay. Benzene? Large. Huh? Large. Large. Yeah. Okay. So benzene will have large. So now you know the what is the theory behind this. Basically, benzene is a pi to pi star, and this one is n to pi star. N and pi star are perpendicular. So if two electrons are there, in one in the n orbital, another one in the pi star orbital. There is not that much overlap, so they will stay in far apart even to begin with. So you don't need to have single interpreted spin on these things. Even by nature, they will, they will not they will be a particular object. So now, if I take, for example, a series of compounds. Okay. So you take, for example, benzene, and then you take anthracene, okay, the gap. Which one you think will have larger gap? Benzene or the anthracene? Which one will have larger gap? Below one. Huh? Below one. Below one? Oh, yeah. That is anthracene? Yeah. That will have larger gap. Okay. So the answer is not right. 
they tell me why the answers are uh, answer answer is not correct. Okay. Mm, okay. The next slide has the answer. So, so if you have a pipe by stars, okay, the basic principle is the two electrons, if they can be far apart, the repulsion is going to be less to get started. And then if they are confined to a smaller area, the repulsion is going to be more. Okay. So for example, if you take benzene, the space in which the electrons can move around is only this much. Whereas here, the where it can move around is this much. So what will happen is, if you have two electrons here or here, now these two electrons are one here and one here. So the repulsion is going to be less. And if they, so whereas here, since it is together, the repulsion is going to be large. So singlet and the triplet, the, the gap will uh, 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 change. So for example here, you can see that if you remember, the, I had a slide, it depends upon the overlap between the two orbitals where the electrons are. Okay, so here. So for example, this compound is ethylene, the gap is 70, it's a little bit longer, 60, and even longer, it is about 50. So the longer it gets, the gap gets smaller, okay? So, and similarly, benzene, naphthalene, anthracene, you can see it is 52, 38, 34, like that. For example, here, if you take these compounds, benzaldehyde, acetone, ac something, the gap is very small, 10, 7, 5. Tell me why these gaps are small, whereas these gaps are large. But why the bottom ones have a smaller gap? and the rest of it has got a larger gap. Larger means, you know, between the molecules, this is 30 to 50, but this 30 is much higher compared to any one of these things. So, tell me what is the reason. So if you have 
ethylene is like this okay ethylene if you take the last compound it is like this 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay so the two electrons are going to be close to here and here and the last compound so the repulsion is going to be more and the last compound one electron can be here the other electron can be here the distance is fairly large so what would happen is the repulsion if it is less the energy of the singlet will go a little bit it, is not, it will not go that high and because of that the gap will get smaller so but if you notice they are like this suppose you take this compound and then you have another compound like this tell me whether for this compound this is okay let's say here so this is this and that one is this one suppose you have this compound so this gap the energy for this molecule the gap will be the same as this or this or it will be different tell me tell me uh, so this one is for example 70 and the next one is 60 what do you think would this be with this will this, would this be 70 or 60 or 50 which one hmm? Fifty? No, no. Fifty or no? Fifty or more or less or? Fifty. Fifty. Lesser than fifty. Anybody else? One hundred. One hundred and fifty. One forty. Okay. So this one. Okay. Understand. So this is seventy. This one is 60, and then the third one is one, two, three double bonds. Now that was 50, and here there is one double bond, but then there's a carbon here, and then there's a double bond. Okay, this one is a carbon CH2. Okay, so for that, the number would be similar to this. There are two double bonds here. There is one double bond and two double bonds. One double bond, two double bonds. Now this compound with the two double bonds, will it be gap is 60? R70. Hmm? You are the one who always answers something. What is your what is your answer? Below what? Below the 60. Below the 60. Yeah. Okay. And maybe higher than the 50. Higher than the okay. So it is higher than 50, but lesser than 60. Okay. It would, it would be closer to 70, okay? Because this one is, these two electrons are, one is localized here, another one is localized here. In between, there is no p orbitals, right? It is this, if you look at the structure of this compound, the orbitals are going to look like this. So, this compound is this. So, the electrons can go from here to here. So there is going to be overlap. This compound is so the electrons are going to be localized at these two ends, here and here. So there are two separate double bonds. These double bonds are not conjugated like this. So this one will have a pi to pi star state. That one will have a pi to pi star state. Each one will have a gap of about 70 kilocalories. So it is a question of whether the electrons can find from this end, whether they are conjugated. All the p orbitals should have overlap. You know, when you say this compound, if you notice CH2, and then there is no saturated carbon in between. CH, 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 CH2. Okay. So that is very important to, when you look at the compound, you should see whether it is a conjugated molecule or it is not conjugated. If it is conjugated, the energy, is, the gap is likely to get smaller. 
okay. All right, so let me see what is the okay. I will we will finish up uh, pretty soon. So you will have the ground state, first excited state, second excited state, and then corresponding triplet state T1 and T2. So S0, S1, S2 like that. But when each one of these states, when we write, we will put a line like this. We will always put a zero, you know, depending upon uh, the book that you read, they will just put like this. So you will have a zero, a S1, S2, and then you will have T1 and T2, okay? So, the, but as you see here, this is the thick line, is the one that represents, but then you will have a lot of smaller lines. That tells you, if you remember, when we started this discussion, we made an assumption, what is called as Born-Oppenheimer approximation. In which we assume that the molecule is stationary, it is not vibrating. So if you assume to be stationary, there is only one level. But if the molecule is vibrating, each level, there will be a lot of vibrational levels in each ground, each state. So because the molecule is the ground electronic configuration, it will have a distance like this, more or more. So each one of these three numbers here, one, two, three, four, that represents the vibrational levels in the molecule. And you go and look at this diagram, energy will change for even slightly, but not much, but it will change. That will have a consequence on the emission and absorption spectrum. <coughs> okay, maybe we will stop here. Maybe I will come back around 345. Yeah. So I will do some time for it to absorb. Think about what I said for the last one hour and then come back, come back fresh and then you can answer more questions.